project manager and me wanted to create a project layout. So the idea behind this layout is, first of all, it's a bit more on the structure side. So if you tend to like a lot of structure in a layout, then this might be something to consider. Um, but basically just wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm gonna share here. So this is a, a layout that I would recommend throwing in the back or creating in the back of a existing planner that you're using for the year anytime you're gonna start a new project. So like, let's say you're gonna remodel the kitchen or maybe you're gonna build a course, I don't know. And this would be something, that, a layout that you could throw together. A part of the layout that I'm gonna show you is first a working page for the project. Second is one option of organizing the task by category. So if you're someone who really likes to see things in blocks and create your own categories for the tasks, this might be a great layout for you. The other thing I've also added is a couple of layouts on how to take those tasks that you create in the first page, which you'll see as you watch this video, and plot them in time. So I have two layouts about how can you plot those things, those tasks in time, if your brain likes to see things in, in time and, and work with, with time in that way. So the whole idea is, is that with a project, obviously, is that a project is something that has a beginning and an end. So you're gonna use this layout for something like that. This is not necessarily a layout for a to-do list or a reoccurring checklist for a week or a month. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so this project layout is gonna consist of two pages and on this page is more of, consider this more of like a workspace and then the second page is putting things into categories. So I'm gonna have two layouts I'm gonna walk through in this video. The first one is more, if your brain is, if you kind of need some workspace to say, okay, here's all the tasks that are associated with this project that I wanna do. And I just, and I like to think about things in categories. So that's what this layout's all about. The next one I'm gonna do is gonna have the same worksheet, but then on this side, but then it's gonna have a time time option. So if you like to plot things in time, I'll be doing that one later in this video. So, but first I'm gonna work on this side, which is kind of more of this project worksheet. And the way that I would use this and the way I use this is more on the fly. So I use blank pages at the back of my journal, which is um, bullet journal or my DIY planner. I use those blank pages and I will, you know, kind of spontaneously set up layouts for things that I need to do. So this is, uh, I would say, also has a lot of structure um, when it comes to projects. So if you like a lot of structure, this might be a layout that you might like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow space at the top so that I can have some writing space. And um, I'm just going to create a frame for the title of this, and it will be the project, whatever the project name is. And then going a space down, I'm gonna create a place where I can write, what is the outcome that I want for this project? And you'll see this all come together. And then the next space I'm going to create is what questions or what information do I still need to be successful with this project. And that's what this writing space is all about here. And then the whole thing about a project is that we have to break things up into tasks so that they're a little more, things are a little more manageable. This layout does not consider dependencies um, if you're getting really technical when it comes to projects. Um, and so, I'm gonna create here a place to just kind of free write what are the tasks that we want. All right, so this bottom space here is gonna be a place where I start able to identify categories. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my calligraphy pen to trace this and um, make it come to life. And then I'll talk a little bit about my logic.
Okay, so the whole idea with this side is writing the project name, what's the outcome that you want to have? So if you're remodeling a kitchen, what is the outcome of that remodel that you want to have happen? And then what are the questions or more information needed for that remodel? And then I went ahead and made this a, t a larger space for a writing space, um, but you could do it like with more of a single because there's, there's probably a lot more tasks than this for a kitchen remodel in my example. But the idea is to now, okay, I'm just gonna free write everything that I need to get done in order to complete this project. I'm not gonna really think about order. I'm not gonna think about category yet. Write everything down and then break things into categories and using symbols. So just, I mean, just as an example, one category could be errands, one can be communication, one category could be money or budget related to the project. Um, another could be just related to say vendors or contractors. And you know, maybe another is related to decor versus structure. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up here. And so then the idea is after you go through and do your tasks, you now take and look at each task and say, okay, does it fit? Are there categories that I can pull out? And can I fit things into categories here? You could even have a miscellaneous for things that are kind of the outlier. And then the idea is with the next page, you're going to organize all of the things that are here and put it into categories so that you can work through them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that layout really quick. Um, so you can see that. All right, so if your brain works this way, this might be helpful. So what you would then do is take the tasks from the categories and organize them into work streams that, so, and if your brain works that way, this organization way of organizing the tasks might be helpful to you. Um, I did not create lines in, for each um, task, but that's obviously something you could do. Um, you could either draw the line like straight across, for example, and go down that way. Or you could do two lines in each section so that you have more space for tasks. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. And now I'm gonna move on to the next layout, which includes a actually a replica of this, but on this side, I'm also gonna include timeline options to plot the tasks in time. So you could actually have this working page, this page, and then also add timeline pages um, on the next pages if you really wanted to. Okay, so for the second option, I still have on this side more of the working page where you list the project, what's the outcome you want, questions, more info needed, and then tasks. And in this layout, I went ahead and, or this spread, I just went ahead and pulled it all the way down to the bottom. And I added little squares to be able to check things off. And what I'm gonna do on this other side, I've divided the page in half. And the idea is if you're somebody who likes to plot things on a timeline or by month, this might work better for you in the sense that you write all the tasks that you have and then you can plot them when they're due. So I'm gonna give you two options. So I'm gonna assume for this top side, I'm gonna assume that I'm tracking milestones, maybe not every single task. And um, let's assume that it's a four month project. The project's gonna take four months. And the bottom one, I'm gonna assume six months. And so I'm gonna have two different layouts here for you to be able to plot these tasks on more of a timeline. So as I said, I've divided the page in half. So on the top one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create like a bar timeline, almost like a Gantt chart, but not really, um, really not. Um, but so what I did was I counted down 11 on the top and 11 up so that I have, I can create this bar across
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count over nine to create space for each month. So let's say this project is gonna run April through July. So I'll write those months in there shortly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot tasks. So I'm just gonna do a hypothetical situation. Let's say I'm writing a book and I want my first draft to be done by say April 10th. So I'm gonna estimate you know, where April 10th might fall, draw a line. And of course you can do this without a ruler and just freehand it. And I'm going to write, maybe my first draft is ready here. And then let's say in May, I want my second draft to be done. So I'm going to draw another line. Let's say 512, I want my second draft to be done. And then let's say in June, so June 20th, I'm going to have my third revision. Let's say my edits happen here on June 30. And then let's say I submit end of July. I've never written a book, so I have no idea if those are the tasks, but just kind of using that as an example. So as you can see here, you can make the lines shorter or longer to accommodate um, tasks that, you know, pop in closer. So like, let's say I wanted to add something here. I could just do a short line. And then add a task here. So this allows you to plot things utilizing the space above and below to put these tasks if that's how you like to see things. The next version I might suggest is just really breaking these up into court, or I'm sorry, into squares. So I'm gonna, counting in half, so down 12 squares, and then over 12, so it's gonna be a 12 by 12 situation. And then what I do is and each month I'd allow myself a space to write the date something's due. So like say July 7, 7, 10, you know, maybe I'm researching a remodel. And then let's say maybe by the 15th, I have a plan of what I wanna to do to my kitchen. And then on the 31st, let's say I am researching contractors. So this is another way, and obviously I'm writing really big and you can make it smaller, but this is a way to plot out in time the tasks that you have over here. So I hope this layout was um, helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know.